in its own four start VB, less than ideal. A lot of it looks like it's between the connection of the mids and the forwards. What's kind of going wrong there and how do you rectify that? Um, to put it bluntly, we've got to keep training it. Um, it's pretty identifiable what, what is breaking down for us at the moment. Um, because we do feel like there's aspects of our game that is in, in, is in good shape um, that will hold up strongly when we get, when it all comes together. Um, and that connection piece is certainly one of them um, going inside 50 and, and connection in our front half. So we'll keep working at it um, and we'll keep, I guess, adjusting our method to hopefully improve sooner rather than later. Why is it breaking down? Like it looks so different to what we saw last year. Yeah, it's a bit of method um, and as, as Nixie touched on, sometimes a bit of confidence um, and, and guys in and out of form. So combination of all those three um, and as I said, we're, we're reviewing it. We had a good chat about it this morning as match committee um, and we will have a good chat with the players this week and further train what we already have been training and hopefully um, you know, in the coming weeks we can see um, better connection. Um, that's what we're aiming for. A lot of the criticism has been around the midfield specifically, you know, from outside outside the club. I mean, as a midfield coach, I mean, what do you kind of think about? It? Do you think it's fair? Like, I mean, uh, to Vanilla, you know, to not damaging in there? Yeah, look, I can, I can understand and appreciate um, there's commentary around certain styles of players that we have and the look we have in around the footy, but um, really comfortable that those guys are able to play the roles that we need them to play. Um, and look, I'd, I'd say to date the midfield's been... Um, more than competitive in and around the footy. We've uh, clearance-wise have been holding our own. Um, yes, we can get better, in, certainly um, in and around the footy, um, with some of our metres gained from stoppage, etc. But the guys have been playing the roles that we need, and at different stages. I mean, on the weekend, for example, Isaac's come up around the ball. We played Josh higher than normal, which give us a bit of a different look through the midfield. Um, Luke Nankervis comes in and plays a winger role, and often wingers can be in and around the stoppage and contest a lot. So. Um, look, that mix is going to evolve over time, but at the moment, yeah, that's the mix we're, we're opting for, and we, we believe we're generating enough supply out of that. Um, but we'll continue to review it. The debate, sorry, sorry, the debate kind of comes up again. Uh, those, um, our crowds here were really too similar in the midfield. Oh, look, it's something, a conversation around our mix every week we have, um, and where we can get best bang for buck with guys in form, with guys in different roles within the team. Um, but as I said, um, one of the pleasing things at the moment for us um, in what has been a disappointing start for us is that we're generating enough supply with the way that we're playing. We just need to get more efficient with how we're going ahead of centre. So um, we'll keep tinkering where we can and if that means some, some structural pieces move then we'll make those decisions when they need to get made. So it's a balance between with Isaac in terms of yep. in the middle versus how incredibly valuable he is up forward. Yeah, we want two of him to be honest. Um, but. You're right, that's part of the balance we do discuss a lot, is that Isaac ahead of the ball, commands a, a very good defender, wins a lot of his own ball and, and makes, well, kicks opportunistic goals that, that we just, a lot of players can't do. Um, and then in and around the footy gives us a different look, so trying to balance that out is certainly a conversation we have and um, we'll continue to look at that, as I said. Are you considering having him at more centre bounce attendances? Obviously, he did look so explosive. I remember him kicking forward to Darcy Fogarty, who managed a 50 metre goal. Are you considering having him at more attendances? Yeah, look, he, he does have the ability and the licence to, to come up to centre bounce. Um, we've done a lot of work with him over summer, and he gives us, as I said, just a different point of difference, and he just plays plays his footy in around the ball, which, which we love about him. So. He does have the licence to come up and um, at different stages in games may call for him to be up more, more times than others, but um, yeah, it's definitely something along with, as we've mentioned before, um, Joshua Shelley as well may spend some time in and around the footy and centre bounce in particular. The another, thing, another thing that Nixie pointed out post-game is an area is the basics and the fundamentals. How do you fix that so quickly when it's, you know, like, as Nixie says, just the basics and the simple things? Yeah, again, it comes back to how I started with, with training. We've got to make sure we're we're just getting as much, I suppose, skin on the footy as we can and, and touching as many footies as we can throughout, throughout the week, which we have been doing and have done all pre-season. So, um, look, I can only speak from personal experience when I was playing and I was, wasn't in the best of touch or fundamentals were breaking down. Um, during the week was about just trying to touch as many footies as I could and, and do it under pressure so that when I came to the, the game on the weekend that I knew I'd, I'd done all that I could. So a lot of our players, are sort of, sort of say all of our players are in that mindset where they're trying to trying to improve as quickly as they can and, and execute those fundamentals. The Blues are 4-0. and zero. What are you expecting um, this weekend when you play them? Sorry, I get some kind of weird interference all of a sudden. Okay. I didn't have... No worries. So going against the Blues are 
What are yeah. we expecting this weekend yeah. from the Blues? Yeah. Oh, look, they're, um, they're playing some outstanding footy at the moment and, and winning their close games when they're presented with that opportunity. But we know what they've got ahead of the ball with their two twin towers and how damaging that can be. Um, their midfield mix, um, they've got some big bodies in there, obviously with Cripps and some, some role players in and around him, which are... You know, very hard to combat. Um, not sure where Walsh is at, but I think he's around the mark this week too. So they've got some some running power in and through there. I mean, and off their half back one, they've got some some real weapons as well. So um, really balanced list, playing some really good footy, um, and they they along with GWS were the, the most informed team in the back end of last year. It looks like those two teams in particular have started the year as strong as any. So going to be a big test for us. How do you combat the big two forwards, Mackay and Kono? Well, obviously, there's going to be um, two of our individuals that will be placed with those roles. But um, as it always comes back to, you know, we're going to have to put some heat on in and around the, the midfield to make sure that ball doesn't come in shoulders out, as we say, um, and then back in other defenders to help out when the timing is right as well. I know it's early in the week, but is there any consideration to bring Billy Dowling in? Perhaps he played such a killer sample game and he looks really good and really strong and ready to go. Yeah, we, um, I saw Billy's game the other week. I was really impressed with how he went about his footy and he's had a great summer. Um, a number of other young guys are certainly coming in on the office every week and asking, when's it my chance? And um, look, the opportunity for those guys, if they keep playing at the level um, and they keep putting their hand up and stay ready, that that opportunity will come, whether that's this week or in three, four weeks' time or back into the year. That's, I guess, match committee discussion. But what we do love is those guys you know, putting out a, a strong output on the weekends. Maybe you kind of mentioned, I guess you felt like you, you're doing some um, good things. So it seems like it's probably not punishing the opponents. Yeah. What's that coming, yeah, coming down to? Not punishing the opponents? Yeah, yeah, when you're going through. Yeah, look, so I guess when you talk, you know, generating enough inside 50s and and we've already touched on the, the call it the connection inside 50 and, and, and missing shots, etc. But, I mean, there's a bit of method involved in that. Personnel at times and and fundamentals, which we've already spoken through. So a combination, I guess, of all those three things is is how we, we get better at it. And I guess glass half full is that we've we've been able to do it before with the same mix that we've now got, or very similar or close to it, last year I'm talking about. So um, we know we've got it in us. It's a matter of just getting it back out of us. Do you think about Sloane? Like, is he, how's he tracking? Is he getting I know he's a back in contact training. Is he like yeah. close to the maybe returning? Yeah. I, Something that, that Rory's going to have to answer himself, but I do know he's he's having regular conversations with his various specialists, and that um, yeah, he'll he'll be in a position sooner rather than later where he makes a decision about what that looks like for him in consultation with all those specialists, as I said. So I haven't actually spoken to him about it for the last few days, but I'm sure he'll um, you know have a chat with him this week and see where he's at. But that's on its own time clock with what Rory needs to do and put his health first and foremost. Now, I know you touched it before the confidence thing, but from your time as a player, can you switch it instantly or is it a process? Can you? It can turn really quickly. Yeah, it certainly is one thing that can, can turn. And as I sort of said, I mean, if you're looking at things glass half full and we are very frustrated and disappointed at the moment, but we are playing a lot of our game in the right way. Um, the fundamental side of things and the, the connection piece, can happen really quickly. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, the amount of work that we have been putting in for a period of time and feel like we've tinkered with the right areas the last few weeks, that um, the lever that we pull might be the one that really gets us going. So going to have to be at our best this week. We know Carlton have been, you know, if not the best form in, in, informed team in the comp. So um, it's going to mean yeah, we need to we need to be, be ready to go. Well, as, a former cap, as a former captain of the club, you're probably well aware that you know, LA can be a hard place when you're not doing so well. How do you kind of you know, keep every, um, keep the players not getting too disheartened given you know, the start of the year? Oh, look, internally, yeah, well, as I said, we're, we're as frustrated and disappointed as what our supporters would be as well. Um, but it's how you use that disappointment and frustration to get clarity in and around what it takes for us to, to get our game to the level we want. And then also, understand that yeah we, we will fight our way out of this um, whether that's this weekend or in the coming weeks we'd, we'd like to think so but we'll keep getting our, our hands dirty and, and get to work and and turn things around as, as quickly as we can because because we care and and we know we can be playing better than what we are you touch on the sample boys coming to you when results aren't going your way i know you made five changes and obviously yep. no sample game on the weekend how do you resist the urge not to just all right we're going to change things up completely this week yeah i guess there, there is a form component with guys that are playing the AFL and SNFL and we weigh that up. There's also 
um, guys that have built a you know off the back of a large bank of form that they have trust and that they play at, at AFL level and I guess in and around all that there's conversations we have ongoing as a match committee so we'll have them again this week and in weeks to come and the team will evolve as the year goes on I'm sure. Are you planning on kind of mixing that midfield up? Are you confident that you know Laird, Crouch, Barry are explosive enough against Carlton? Yeah as I said they've got some big bodies in around there so we'll, we'll certainly have a look at it and see what that mix looks like going into the game and yeah, whether that mix is different or the same, um, what we'll be focusing on is getting our contest right and making sure we get a similar supply, ideally more than what we have been getting in previous weeks and we become the efficient team that we know we can be.